Oh, you like, did. You jagged. Damn it, Jordan. You didn't screw that one down. Oh, 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 oh. It's all a terrible idea. Hey, kiddos. We've got a countertop and cabinets and a sink. And where's my coffee? I did drink four cups of coffee, but that means it is time for a backsplash. Now, we're decided to go with subway tile style backsplash. One, because it would have cost me an arm and a leg to do it differently. And two, nothing in this kitchen is shiny, so this will be the only shiny gloss thing. We think it'll kind of brighten it up a little bit. Um, and these are, these are pretty easy to install, so we're going to have some tips for you along the way. Sam and I have done a few of these. Jordan never has. It should be fun and interesting. Let's rip. So we're going with a six by three subway tile. A couple things you're gonna wanna do here is uh, make sure you have a straight reference line. We wanna make sure we have full tiles in the bottom coming up to when we line it up here, you can see that's just barely gonna hit the top here, which is fine because we're gonna use this line here as our first row's reference. Then if we need to, we'll shave off a bit of the bottom. Also, the way these tiles are built, we don't need to put any spacers in there, which should help us significantly keep this thing moving fast. You wanna take measurements before you start cutting your tile because you don't wanna end up with tiny slivers. The slivers are always what looks the worst, and it always looks like someone DIY'd it or didn't plan if they end up with slivers. If my math's correct, we should end up with a two inch piece dying into that corner, which should look perfectly fine. I think. The thing's been here longer than I have. To make this job easier, I have pre-mixed thin set. You can use an adhesive on a backsplash because it's not gonna get caked in water. I believe this is a uh, 1 8 notched V groove trowel, I'm not really sure. One of us didn't clean it very well, so I can't tell. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to have on hand, get yourself a Sam, because he will have everything you need. And then if you can't find a Sam, get a marker, and then learn how to read. I've got six inch tiles here. They're perfectly six inches. So what you wanna do is get a couple going, find the center. I'm gonna use, I don't even know what the hell this tool is called. It's a tile cutter. You see a lot of people using tile saws. We'll probably use the tile saws to cut crazy corners and stuff, but this cutter here works great with these kind of ceramic tiles. You're gonna line her up. It's got a little wheel on it that's gonna score. Make sure your wheel's lined up on your mark. Come back through and you wanna score your tile. All you're doing is scratching the surface should pop nice and clean. And this will go much cleaner and faster than if you were to pull out that big ass tile. Other thing too is make sure you have a fresh wheel. I just learned this on the internet, but I'll pass it on to you. Most of these cutters come with an extra wheel in the handle. It's like a gift. And we love gifts. And that's just the tip. Well, is that a jackass? I uh, bought this nice, this is called like an edge trimming or some, something like that. And uh, I got bevel tiles. So I'm gonna cut the half tile, it overlaps here. I bought this because it had a nice, died really nice on this bevel edge. I didn't think about the cut halves. So you don't wanna see that. So this, we'll hide it and leave a nice grout line. Get started, you wanna make a mess, ruin everything, and then keeping glob on the wall, and kind of just smudge it around, don't worry about having it be perfect yet. One of the reasons the laser level is nice is because once you get your adhesive up, you can still see your line. If you write your lines on the wall, you lose that. So when we can, we use the laser. You give yourself a nice little area and you want to come in and just your tile. Now we're working this line up so that the next row below it, they will hide down into our line below it. It's the old back butter. Pretty common technique. Ugh, my girl. I feel old today. Did you cut the grass this week? Cut the grass last night. Special order to rake it based this morning. That's where I'm at in my life. So, just for the ease of convenience and getting it going, I went with every tile that I could that was a full tile, I went ahead and put on the wall, on just this wall. We haven't gone over here yet. Now, we have to get into cutting the tiles. A lot of them, I'll be able to use this thing and just be able to cut like in half or you know, just one straight line across. Some of them, we will have to get a little squirrely because I'll have to cut around the different parts. So, I have this laid out. Now we have to go out to the wet saw. All right, kids, so 
here, now to come up. Now, we had to drop this down. Literally, what you can see is be like half inch heavy because of the bulkhead here. Typically, you'd want to run your cabinets at 18 inches, ours are 17 and a half. Shoot me. If they're at 18, you can get six full rows. So we're gonna have to make cuts here. Now, we should be able to get about five parts out of this size and then hide the gap up here. So Sam's gonna go out, he's gonna cut five of them. We're gonna lay them. Then I got the next ones laid out. It's easier for him to set the fence and cut all at the same time instead of back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Hi kids, we're now outside. I'm wearing a raincoat because we're using a wet saw and my t-shirt's already soaked and I've cut like two tiles. So, raincoat. This is a tile saw. It uses a diamond coated blade to cut the tile and it uses water to rinse away all the diabetes. These are pretty easy to use. This one's basically like a table saw. It has a little fence. They come in a few different kinds. Of, I like the ones that slide. All that to be said, you can get them in a whole range of different prices and different features and that kind of thing. You can also rent these. Pretty simple. We're gonna cut some stuff. So we're ripping through this tile. There's only one thing that peels tile or paint off the wall, and it's the smell of the man's ass that's behind that door. This is the one downside to this bathroom kitchen as assembly. It's great to take a poop in the middle of your uh, dinner creation, but when you gotta stand there and smell what Jordan's doing in there right now, Mother. What did you eat? It says bad foot lettuce in my bowl. Told you. Lettuce does that to you? Oh, my goodness. That one's really bad. <laughs> my guy. All right, so putting on this edging, making sure she's squiz air, square in the 90s, or the mid 2000s, I guess I would say. Something important here. We have a 73 inch wide gap. Our tiles are six inches wide. If I cut one in half, that's three inches. That'll kill us on this end and a, a one inch piece of tile because it'll end, yeah, that's 11 and a half tiles, 12, 70, 12 tiles. Ends us at 72, and then it's a one more inch, which would be one inch. So we're gonna start with a two and a half inch tile, and then we'll have a two and a half and four and a half. Those bigger tiles will look better. I learned I don't like doing this. Jordan does not like renovation work. Motherfucker, this is wrong. Work environment like at John Malecki's uh, shop. Well, it's like a locker room full of people who never went to school. We only got one more tile. Oh wait, no we don't. There's a whole row. Damn, she bangs up. Here's a funny story for you. Four hours to come around this corner because of all the cuts. The proper planning, 32 minutes. <laughs> we got this side done, which is, I'm not gonna lie, Sam, pretty impressive. It's looking good. We got one more tile to go up here in the corner, then we let it sit overnight, and we'll grout it in the morning. Grazie. It's grout o'clock, my friends. Few things you're gonna need. Two buckets, clean bucket, dirty bucket, and a sponge. And grouting should go pretty quick. We've got unsanded grout here. You use unsanded grout for thin lines and sanded grout for thick lines. It's just white. This is a grout float. For those of you that are wondering what the hell I'm up to, you just get a small amount. And you start mushing her into the cracks. Mush her into the crevices. I usually work a couple feet. Make sure it gets in there nice. The grout kind of binds everything together for those of you that are curious on what the hell it's needed for. And it also makes it look super, super clean. Trace the lines. Pretty much. Typically, you can just kind of mush it on and work it around. These beveled edges are making that a little bit trickier, so I'm just gonna trace the lines, but you can keep this pretty clean. This is pretty much the easiest part, I would say. Yeah, there's not really a whole lot of technique to it. You just cover it. If you want, time to just brush your killer. Cool. And then you can grab the other float to do that way. Hell yes, he's here! The CNC Cowboy! I'm a proud father. The CNC Cowboy just showed up. What's up, boys? Yeah. So you got the dirty, and then you use and you flip it, take the clean part. Wipe it clean. But you only get like one or two wipes on the clean side. Yeah, I grabbed my swimming pool. My dad, my dad's swimming pool. You said you were five. The grout has been floated 
that be the term? I would say forcefully crammed in the cram hole. All right, we crammed the cram hole, and now, cool thing about doing grout is like, it feels like this is not the way to do it, but it totally is. Very quickly, it just rubs down to like a perfect finish. As it dries, you'll get a haze on the tiles, and you have to come back with a clean sponge and kind of wipe that off. Then once that's all dry, we'll have to spray a grout sealer on the grout. And then, that's it. And she's done. So oh, well, oh, we gotta hit some silicone on yeah, the Yeah, some silicone, silicone, lose my mind. Silicone down along the edges, anywhere that the tile meets another surface. And that would just use a wipe as well. Pantry's here! And, hold on. I told him. It really didn't look like it was gonna fit. I was just gonna get my truck and drive. I'm gonna scribe that in, but your width's wrong. Uh, no, because you can only make that three inches because you're gonna cut it back. Cut it back a lot more than. It's fine. Yeah, it just, it just needs this to be under. Yeah, whatever that is. So the back cut sign gonna help us. Don't no, worry about it. And then Jordan, make a note. You gotta make a. You're gonna make a two pan, two box to panel here. Okay. And then drive it out and get it. Get it. You gonna make just like a double doors or something? Yeah, it'll look like. It'll look like yeah. A bit two square panels. Oh, as far as it's kitchen. Yeah. yeah. Shoot. No, not, we don't have a panel one. Two, this overhangs an inch and a quarter, so it'll become an inch and a quarter here. This is three inches yeah. wide. Yeah. So it's gonna, it'll be tight, it'll be fine. Um, um, it'll work. Uh, this is a door gonna have enough room. Here. It's about, we have pull out drawers here, here, so we need it to be wider. Yeah. Everything's fixable, we know that. It's all wood. It's all, all cases. Cases. Yeah. money. That's it. It's yep. paint. All right. And paint. And John's hair. Well, they just took the right measurement there. The only problem is this is back set, so we're gonna have to put a spacer block in here to screw the front of it in. He is hiring. <laughs> hey, we're having a shop right now. He'll wear a cowboy hat if you need him to. Look at it, it's hanging on the wall. I'll do the CNC stuff. These are off the CNC. It's a, you got that ownership salary. <laughs> I just didn't really notice, to be honest. Well, I know you were rushing I told, to get it done. I told him when we were loading, I said I bonded this side to get painted. But to their it's point, a big ear. with an ear this big, this is, it's actually a hazard. Because if you're walking through here and you clip it, you rip the whole face off the cabinet. An easy fix though, we'll get it in, take a measurement, we'll build a panel and finish this in a month. All right. So what is this bracing back here? It was racking a lot. It's a good fix. Hey, real quick, a lot of you have been asking how you can support the channel, if we have a Patreon, or if you can join a membership or anything like that, and for the, the answer is no. But what we do have is some killer merchandise if you want to support us. And you can get something awesome like this, which I gotta say is one of my favorite designs. Or this one, pretty timely I would say with uh, how ridiculous things are right now. Or you can get this one, which I've got to say, it's pretty awesome. We've been working on this one for a minute. We know a lot of you guys really love the lettuce spray. So if you want to support the channel, snag up a shirt, piece of merch. We've got a ton of stuff. We love you guys. Thank you guys so much for supporting us. Now I got to find Sam and figure out if we're ever going to finish this damn kitchen. Ah! So backsplash is done, which means we just got to get a couple cabinets. We made a few adjustments. If you saw in the last or two weeks ago, one of the videos, we had a couple hiccups in our measuring. So Jordan rebuilt some cabinets that just came back to a finish. And this is our pantry. The pantry, we left a long ear over here. This long ear is going to give us an opportunity to scribe this cabinet into this janky ass wall here and give it a nice tight fit. So Sam's going to handle that because he is a wizard of scribing. He's been growing his beard his whole life for this. And uh, we'll show you a few tips on how to do something like this. We've got one shot at it. So fingers and fingers crossed, buttholes puckered. Knees weak, arms spaghetti. Knees weak, arms spaghetti, yes. Let's go. We knew that this wall we were gonna need to scribe into. It's actually pretty straight, but we still wanna make this nice and tight tight. So we intentionally left a little ear on it and it works out for the better because I'm not pointing any fingers, but this should be over here. So we're gonna make it over there. All I did was I put a piece of tape on the front of this. We added a back bevel to it because it makes scribing way easier because you're not cutting through the whole thickness of the material. You just then are like, you know, like a knife edge. You only have to cut off a little bit. So I put some blue tape on the front of that edge. Then I take a scribe tool, one of these things, if you've never used one of these, I don't know, maybe $10. Everyone should own like five. All you gotta do is set your gap to the same gap as over here. Set your gap like that, and then you come over here and you lay your scribe tool on there. And you wanna make sure that you're nice and square too, and keeping it flat against the wall, because if you rotate it, it'll get off. Put that cup on it. 
forgot to mention, I did it before, I got excited. When you go and you push this up to where it needs to be, you wanna make sure that it's level. Cause if the thing's crooked, then you scribe it, it's gonna not fit. So I put a little shim under it just to make sure that I was level off of this face first, but just make sure that it's level first cause it needs to go in against the wall in the same way that it's going to when it's finished. Be careful, Sam. So to put the microwave upper in, I went ahead and clamped these together on the floor. Everything measures out correctly. I've already got these pre-drilled. I'm gonna screw these two together and then hang them as one single unit. This cabinet's already been hung once, we just popped it out of the wall. I'm gonna take the caps off to pull it through. Is this hot? I don't know. All right. Hold, pause. Hold. Same hold on, hold. I'm gonna lick the fucking white wire. Grab the lightning real quick. Got it. Oh, oh, hold on. Okay, hold on. Let's see here. Got it, Jake? Yes. Sucks. This is gonna have to go on first. <laughs> Just the little because only go up. We're gonna hit that clamp. Just come on. I'm so hungry. Apparently, there's chicken bakes in our future, though, so that's exciting. We start a new tradition. We celebrate with chicken bakes. Good. You can uh, move, Jordan. Stop. Just let go. Just go away. Microwave. Know what you can learn, son? F me. That's what you can learn. God, oh, it's so loud here. That didn't sound like a hit. It did it. Yeah, I'm in the nailer. There's one in the middle here, and then nail it up top. Turn to the pantry. I have no work. Pull bus mystery. Okay, so we are wrapping up what's hopefully going to be this project. Panels just came back from finish. They look phenomenal. Jordan, uh, as we know, is a rookie. He, he put a lot of effort into this, but this was his original door, and the mistake that happened here wasn't on him, it was on me for not telling him that this is how it works, but as you guys know, we put space balls in all of our doors, so when things expand, they don't explode, and because there's space balls in this, it actually warped this out, making the door too big in the center. For us to cut it and do a bunch of stuff would have got way too squirrely, and also ruined these styles here, size-wise. That's right. And then we had to refinish them anyway. So he went ahead and rebuilt new doors and put this crossbar in here, keeping them straight. So we got this panel in, we're gonna screw this thing in, and then we're gonna mount these doors, get this pantry and this kitchen buttoned up so we can do a fun reveal. And I hope it turns out slightly above average. She swings. It's like way, way over. Got a lot of adjusting to do on the end. Well, I'm just trying to imagine what Jordan would have said his excuse was since he's not here this week. Yeah. Golfing and shit. Everything's wrong. Oh, I <laughs> a clip in, fucker. This doesn't want to latch. Why do you not want to latch? Sam and Jordan. Lay on the floor. Note to self, Sam. Stop being so fat and stupid. Oh. After multiple trials and tribulations, I decided came out Crocs are life. And even though it's not what I wanted it actually, we're gonna put the sliding drawer pullouts on this side and my water cooler over here. When you do sliding drawers, 
You just always gotta remember, you need the door to open past 130 degrees or something like that. So Sam and I had to get a little creative with getting that door mounted. Also, pour the coffee for you, it's right there. Oh, you're a hero. Cause we're a bunch of idiots with power tools. We built the cabinets and then they're only a certain height, which is 17 and three quarters of an inch because of this, if you guys recall. That mixer is 18 inches tall, so it doesn't fit underneath my counter, which was the plan. So we're pivoting, and we're gonna put it in here. Hey. All right, one more. If you're wondering, John, why are you putting drawer slides on a shelf? Simple. Someone may or may not have mismeasured something in this kitchen, and we have two extra drawers, and I don't want them to go to waste. So, they gon' send. Should we clip her in, or is it Taco Tuesday? It's it, both. Yes, it is Tuesday. I just learned that. Boom, oh, boom. And the doors actually shut. Yeah! Weird Jordan's on here. We got something done. <laughs> Subscribe <laughs> if you like Mirror. kitchens. We're not going to do any more of them. All right, a few fun features before we wrap this thing up. First off, we finish this pantry. We've got some slide outs in here, uh, which should be pretty convenient for when we actually load her up. And then also, we're hiding my water cooler in here, because uh, in the city of Pittsburgh, we have worse lead content than Flint, Michigan. So we get all of our drinking water filtered. Another cool feature here, this is Sam's addition, is this little fold out. That's a, that's a drying rack, keeps your sponges. Just helps the sink look a little bit more clean. And then I think the last super cool feature that everyone should have in their home if you're doing any upgrades is this guy. She's delicious and nutritious. I'm gonna link to that in the description if you want one. These are awesome. It took me literally 10 minutes to install. You don't have to do anything. You just replace the hole that you would typically have your soap dispenser in. Cause who needs soap? And that's gonna be a wrap on this one. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Really appreciate you tuning in. Sam and I are both still alive. This is Sam. He's breathing. Jordan, on the other hand, we have no idea where he's we at. We haven't seen him in three days. So help us find Jordan. And also, here's a whole playlist for you. You want to watch the rest? It's right here.